Hello, good morning, everyone. This is Bhavna Rajput, and today we are discussing about the introduction of information technology law. In our previous uh, session, we have discussed the crime that are happening, that are occurring by the use of computer uh, or targeting a computer to a computer. So basically, as we know that IT is something, internet is something that is very much connected to the information system, information technology, computer, computer resources, and data network. So there is a law which address all uh, most of the issues uh, related to the computer technology, uh, in especially in the area of the crime or the electronic transactions. I uh, today we'll discuss the introduction so uh, of Information Technology Act. Information Technology Act two thousand is also known as the IT Act 2000, which has been introduced by Parliament on September of, uh, 17 October 2000. This Information Technology Act is basically based on the unicentral model uh, that was proposed by a General Assembly in the United uh, Nations Resolutions uh, on 30 January 1997. So, on the uh, to, to the line of unicentral model, Indian government has passed uh, Information Technology Act to address uh, the issues related to information technology, information telecommunications, uh, which is mainly associated with data, data network, computer system, com uh, computer network. It is the most important law, and I can say it is only uh, the one uh, first law in India that has recognized the electronic transactions cybercrime, e-commerce. So the objective, the very uh, objective of the act is to uh, carry out lawful or trustworthy electronic, digital and online transactions and elevated or reduce cybercrime. The IT Act mainly divided into 13 chapters and 94 sections. The last four sections, which started from 91 to section 94, deal with the revision to the Indian Penal Code 1860. So basically, when law, when the everything is coming up onto the internet, coming up on, up onto the technology, uh, then there was a need to legalize the things, to recognize or regulate the things. There were so many issues has been occurring that is mainly related uh, to the information technology and internet, the, cred the credibility of the internet and the credibility of the transaction that is happening through the internet. So the main object of the IT law was to regulate the paperless transaction. And uh, along with this, to combat the crimes that has been occurring due to these paperless transactions, to recognize uh, the e-commerce and electronic transactions. IT Act uh, 2000 has two schedules. It, it, it has been divided into two schedules. First schedule deals with the document to which the act shall not apply, uh, especially the ne Negotiables Act. And second schedule deals with the electronic signatures or electronic authentication methods. So there are uh, certain features that is very exclusive to the Information Technology Act. The feature of the IT Act is that it the, uh, the term digital signature has been changed to an electronic signature to make it a greater generation impartial act. It addressed the offenses, penalties, and breaches of laws. It outlines the justice dispensation systems for cyber crime and uh, case of cyber contravention. Along with it, the information technology defines a new segment a new definition that has not been addressed by any law, specifically a cyber cafes. We all know what cyber cafes are. But what is the role of the cyber cafe and how to uh, fix any kind of ac accountability on the cafes, on the shops that is providing access to the internet uh, by, by establishing a computer network? So uh, cyber cafe uh, is something which has been recognized, which has been addressed by IT Act. Before the IT Act, cyber cafes were uh, mainly uh, dead like general shops. They have no responsibility. If someone is committing any kind of crime or doing any illegal activity of using the crime, uh, using the system that has been established in the particular cafe, 
then what is the roles and responsibility of the cyber cafe for that crime that has happened with the cafe's premises? So that has uh, this is the mainly uh, new issue that has been addressed by the uh, IT. Along with there are various issues like digital signature, how to generate the digital signature, how to certify the digital signature, what is the payer key and what is the uh, security keys, who are the intermediaries, what is the meaning of access. There are so many things that has been defined by IT. It offers the constitution of cyber regulatory advisory committee. It offers uh, the Information Technology Act is based on totally the Indian Penal Act. The, uh, the criminal jurisprudential part of the Information Technology Act that are based on Indian Penal Code. Huh? The crimes that is happening on the physical worlds now came into the digital worlds. Uh, there are so many crimes that is happening, that has continued happening since a very long time in a physical world, like bullying, defamation. But when they start happening in the space, in the virtual space, they became more grave, more harmful, more heinous. So we need a specific law for that increasing impact to address the increasing impact of the crime that is uh, happening, that is affected the society at a very larger scale. Similarly, the Evidence Act is all, uh, also very much influenced by the uh, IT Act and similarly the Bankers Book Act. So mainly IT Act was based on uh, Act and that impacted certain Act is the Indian Penal Code, Indian Evidence Act, Bankers Book E-Evidence e Act, the Reservation Bank of India Act and many others. It adds a provision to Section 81 which says that the provision of the Act shall have overriding effect. The provision states that nothing contained inside the Act shall limit any person from exercising any right conferred under the Copyright Act. So basically, crimes, uh, the crime that has been addressed by IT Act was also happening in a physical world. So there is a conflict uh, in types of punishment, in types of definition when something is happening in physical world, uh, world uh, the definition of Indian Penal Code cannot be seen uh, apply to the same crime when it is happening to the virtual worlds. So there is a conflict. Okay? If something is not crime, if something is crime under IPC and it is IT Act, but the person get exemption under the IT Act, so will that person be free from the charges uh, imposed by the Indian Penal Code? So these kind of conflicts uh, firstly faced by India in Sarad, uh, uh, Sarad Babu Dugumati case, uh, who was the sales executive of uh, Avnish Vazad uh, Baji.com uh, that was a leading case of intermediary liability. So in this case, the overriding effect of the IT Act has been confirmed and it was provided that any crime that has been exempted from the IT Act, if someone get discharged from any kind under the IT Act, then same crime cannot be tried under the uh, Indian Penal Code, Jaisi if someone is uh, charged, if someone is culprit of online defamations, then he, if he got acquitted from the charges of def online defamations, then he cannot be persecuted in uh, the provisions of Indian Penal Code because it provides the overriding special effect to Section 81. Further, the offence and the punishment that fall under the Act of 2000 as Pharaohs, tampering with the computer source so document, it also uh, deals with or address certain kind of issues. When people are uh, coming towards the uh, virtual world, uh, there are a group of people who are getting benefited from it, who are defrauding the people, who are there with a very, uh, very much bona fide intentions. So we, as we are going towards the technology, the crime by the technology is also growing. So there are certain kind of crime that has been addressed by the IT Act. So today we will discuss the sections of the crime that has been discussed by the IT Act. So one of the main crime is tampering with the source code document. Similarly, direction of a controller to subscribe to extend facilities to decrypt information, publication of information, that is in obscene in electronic form, 
penalty for the breach of confidentiality and privacy, hacking for the malicious purposes, penalty for publishing digital signature certifications, false in certain particulars, and penalty for the misrepresentations. So there are certain sections we will talk about it, but before it, uh, we'll discuss the what is the main thing that has been recognized by the uh, IT Act. So digital signature, later on term based or extended to the electronic signature has been recognized by the IT Act. If someone is uh, affixing his signature, his digital signature to some uh, some place that should be recognized by the any court of law. Similarly, legal recognition of electronic government. If a particular law asks or if particular law requires certain kind of documents in written or in printed form and if that kind of document has been produced in an electronic way by the use of computer, that kind of electronic representation of paper has also been recognized by the IT Act. Similarly, legal, uh, legal recognition of electronic signature. When uh, a, a signature or uh, assent has been asked by the certain person, uh, if, someone uh, if someone uses his affixes the electronic signature, that, that electronic signature on such paper has also been considered his representation and the electronic signature has been recognized as as the same capability of the real signatures, genuine signatures. Further, I'm talking about the certain certifying authority. So how will you get your signature? There is a process that you have to apply your application to the certifying authority. And when you pay the fee, the fees of 20, uh, which cannot be more than 25,000, then you can be certified for your signature. You can get your signature by uh, submitting the prescribed form in a prescribed uh, format. Now we'll discuss about certain things that has been recognized, uh, certain crimes that has been recognized or that has been defined, penalized by the IT Act. So section 43 of the IT Act talk about the penalty and compensations for damage, the computer, computer system, etc. So this computer, uh, this section particularly says when someone is accessing or secure access to a computer source, computer system or computer network without permission unauthorizedly. Further, it says, further it says if someone is extracting any kind of data from any computer resources without the permission, he also, uh, he also committing a kind of crime. If someone is downloading copies, extracting any kind of data from the computer resources or uh, without uh, any authorized access, someone introduces or causes to be introduced any computer, computer uh, contentment or computer virus into any computer, computer resources or computer sections. The 43D says that damage or causes to be damaged any computer, computer system or computer network. If someone willingly doing disrupting or causing disruption of any computer, computer system or computer network, if someone denies or cause to be the denial of action to a person who is authorized to access any computer, computer system, that person is committing the crime under the head of section 43. And similarly, if someone is trying to provide any assistance to any person to facilitate access to the computer, or he is trying to bypassing the rules and regulation made under the act. Similarly, if someone charges the service availed by someone else on the account of any other person by tempering or manipulating with any computer resource, computer system, or computer network, Someone similarly destroy, deletes, alter any information residing in a computer system or diminishes its values or utility or affects it injuriously by any means. If someone steals, conceals, destroys or alters 
or cause any person to steal, conceal, destroy, or alter any information, any computer source code from the computer source with an intention to cause damage. This person has been tried under uh, section 43 and and he can be punished uh, with the imprisonment up to three years. Similarly, section 43A. Section 43A talks about when someone, a, any body corporate who is dealing with a very sensitive information of someone and failed to or found to be neglected in the preservation of that sensitive information of that particular person, that company and that corporate should be tried, tried under this section 43A. And he could be liable to damage or for the compensation uh, to pay, uh, compensation to pay to the person affected. Further, section 66. This is a section that is very much similar to the section 43. And it says, Actually, the section 43A was mainly uh, associated with the cyber contraventions. And 66A is, 66 is related to the cyber offense. It says, when hacking a computer system with the malicious intentions, the he person will be punished under this act with the punishment of three years and five up to five uh, lakh rupees. Next, Section 66 A. Section 66 A was a very crucial section that has been uh, struck down by the Supreme Court of India on the grounds of being too vague and uh, contrary to the constitution, to the rights provided under the constitution. So 66 A was uh, when someone sent some message to someone to threaten, to bullying him. And that message is menacing, grossly offensive, or that other person is trying to threaten that person. That all these activities come under the sections of 66A. That 66A has been suspended or terminated uh, in the case uh, by the Supreme Court in case of Sriya Singhal versus Union of India. So the main reason behind the uh, main main reason behind the struck down of this section was that that section was too much valued and the ground of 192 that regulate any kind of speech has not similar was not matched with the ground provided under the section 68. So somehow many times police enforcement agency is using section 66A to violate the people's right of speech. Then we talk about uh, then the section 66B, 66C, and 660. Section 66B mainly deals, uh, deals with any kind of fraudery that has been committed by the use of computer. It provides punishment for dishonesty, receiving stolen computer resources, or communication devices. When someone fraudulently or dishonestly using or transmitting any information, or you uh, and using stolen computer and he is trying to uh, preserve that stolen uh, computer that has been punished under 66B. 66B uh, provide punishment for the identity theft when someone fraudulently or dishonestly make use of electronic signature of someone or password of any other person or the any kind of uh, make use of any kind of unique identification feature of any other person shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to three years and shall also be liable to fine, which may be extended to the rupees one lakh. Similarly, section 660, punishment for cheating by personation by using computer resource document. When any person by means of any communication device or computer resource try to cheat someone or is actually cheating someone by personation, by trying to pretending to someone else shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to three years or the fine which may extend to one lakh. 
so in recent time we have seen many kind of calls from a from a particular company for a particular brand and especially from the particular famous banks that i am so and so person and calling from the uh, this bank and i need certain uh, uh, i need certain document to verify the transaction uh, to do the kyc so when so these kind of actions are punishable under both these acts similarly there is a crime we have discussed uh, in our last time cyber phishing when someone is trying to pretend it be someone a uh, very uh, big brand to lure the individuals to defraud defraud them the crime also uh, be tried and punishable under both the acts uh, both the sections next is 66e there is a uh, terminology vagrism uh, in indian penal code similar is if someone is intentionally or knowingly capturing publishing or transmitting the image of a person the image of a private area of a person without his or her uh, consent under the circumstances when that person thinks that he is alone and no one is watching him violates the privacy of that person and that person who is doing such kind of activity shall be punished with the imprisonment which may extend to 3 year or with fine not exceeding 2 lakh rupees next section is 66f this section is related to the cyber terrorism now uh, this is a new allegation on the internet whether you can say it allegation or where you can say it a fact that internet is uh, largely used by the terrorist either for the recruitment purposes or to spread their ideology or for the con uh, continuation of their crime for the operation of their crime with the help of computer it became very easy then now during the preparation of the activity any kind of uh, criminal activity and during the execution of the activity or after the execution it helps in the escaping from the uh, spot so they communicate through the internet through the social networking websites of the or the various uh, with the help of various platform that provide the communication space so internet is something which has been very much used by the terrorist for spreading the ideology for execution of their crime or for the purpose of es escaping from the crime then there is a need to address this kind of issue so section 66f defines or provide punishment for the cyber terrorism so basically what comes under the activity of cyber term is uh, cyber terrorism is when someone with the intention to threaten the unity integrity and security sovereignty of india so basic there is a certain thing that is that much will uh, that much are very prominent while deciding something whether is something cyber terrorism or not so the intent to threaten the unity integrity or security sovereignty of india to strike terror in the people or any section of the people by matlab if you are threatening them and there should there, there is definitely there is a mode how you are threatening them you are causing some kind of activity that is leading to cause that is leading uh, to cause the threatening to threaten them so when you deny or cause the denial of access of any authorized person to access computer resource when attempting to penetrate or access a computer resource without authorization or exceeding exceeding authorization inducing or causing to induce any kind of computer commitment by any means of such conduct cause or is likely to cause death injury damage to the person destruction of property disruption of knowingly that it is likely to cause such damage disruptions or supplies service essentialities to the life of the community and or adversely affect or the act adversely affect the critical information infrastructure of the particular country especially that the critical information infrastructure that has been defined under section 70 when someone knowingly or intentionally penetrate or access the computer resource without authorization of exceeding authorized access and by mean of such conduct obtain access to any information data computer data that is restricted for the reasons 
and what should be the reason uh, the particular uh, subclass say when someone is uh, intentionally try to access into a computer system or denying access to a reasonable person only because to risk uh, to extract that obtain that particular kind of data that is very much restricted that is under the confidentiality for the reason of security of the state or for the uh, reason of foreign relationship or any restricted information or computer data based with reason to believe that that such information data is very much important for the interest of sovereignty integrity of india the security of the state and for, uh, and the, for the friendly relation with the another states and that information may cause defamation incitement of the offense and that might cause any kind of advantage to any foreign nations group of individual or otherwise committed the offense of cyber terrorism so whoever try to commit whoever try to conspire the cyber terrorism shall be punishable with the imprisonment which may extend to imprisonment in life so cyber terrorism is something that is uh, a raising very much concern in governments all across the globe we have seen uh, a, a very recent example when the data of aims delhi has been compromised and they interrupted uh, access to that particular data and take all the data so when these kind of strategy done by uh, intention to cause terror to cause any kind of fear to the in the minds of people or a section of people that comes in terms of that come in domain of cyber terrorism section 67 it provide punishment for publication or transmitting of obscene material in electronic form so whoever whosoever publish any kind or cause to be published or uh, cause to circulate spread any kind of information through a electronic medium or any material that is lascivious and that might appease to prevent interest or if its effect is such as to tend to deprep or corrupt the mind of those person it having regard to all the relevant circumstances the person who can read it who can see it or hear the that kind of particular material that kind of material we can term as obscene because it has that ability to corrupt the mind who can see it who can read it so any kind of proliferation predation or circulation or transmission is punishable by section 67a similarly 67a provide punishment for the pornography it technically uh, the section say punishment for publishing or transmitting of material containing sexually explicit act in any electronic form so whosoever publishes or transmits or cause to be published or transmitted in the electronic form any material which contains sexually explicit act or conduct shall be punished on first convictions with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to 5 year and with the subsequent punishment he might be convicted with the extended imprisonment which might be extended to the 7 year and fine which may be extended to 10 lakh rupee so we know that pornography uh, is something that is not crime when someone is watching the pornography within the four wall of the uh, rooms it is not crime when someone is trying to circulate to transmit it to publish that kind of pornographic material it instantly became the crime section 66 section 66 b is talk about the publication transmissions of child pornographic material if someone is using any kind of child in a any kind of explicit activity and trying to publish it publishing or circulate that matter he will be punishable under section 67 ex uh, b as we know uh, in reprajula is the case Uh, that has been uh, uh, two moto. The Supreme Court has been taking two moto cognizance of that particular case. That case was mainly related by the child pornography. There are thousands of pages, thousands of 
videos that has been circulated on the Facebook, on the Instagram, that was clearly depicting a victim of sexual abuse in those videos. In this case, Supreme Court clearly directs all these internet intermediaries, internet content hosts to restrict action to such kind of content. So, what is the overall conclusion of this act? This act shows it is an act to show misconduct behavior for transactions executed by way of electronic information, interchange, and another approach of electronic conversations usually referred to as electronic commerce, which contain the user of alternative paper-based method of communication and storage of information to facilitate digital submission of documents with the government agencies. And this is an act. I cannot say that uh, with the increase of, increasing use of internet, increasing use of technology, the other facet, the other dark side of the computer, uh, the using of computer has been uh, witnessed by everyone, either it's me, it's you. We can see the misuse of cyberspace. So to our extent, this is trying to address some kind of cyber crime, that some kinds of crime that has been committed by the use of computer or that has been committed towards a computer. But there are a categories of crime that neither that is punishable nor it is recognized by the internet. And after the revocation of 66A, that space, that space that covers the threatening messages, abusive messages, the grossly offensive messages, bullying messages, has been emptied. There is no special provision that there is no specific section or any kind of regulation that has deals with this kind of behavior on internet. So there are a very much range of crime that is recognized by the IT Act but there are certain things that has not been recognized by the IIT yet. Indian, similarly, internet is very much associated to the data. It, I can say uh, the use of technology and the use of your data is a cross-pollinating uh, sisters. You have to regulate both the things. So IIT yet, while addressing the e-commerce, by addressing the electronic transaction in digital nature, is very much lacking to address the issue related to the data protection, data security. So we are in need of a specific law that has covered all the crimes, a variety, a range of crime that has been emerging every day in cyber space. It, we, similarly, we have need to address certain kind of issue that has been arisen uh, in the area of electronic commerce, such as the fake reviews, it has become a very big problem because the reviews provide such kind of credibility to a person. But what if the reviews has been posed by the particular company? Somehow that company is defrauding that person, the user who is believing that reviews. So these kind of areas are specially neglected by the internet, uh, IT. And overall, IT I can say that overall IT try to address uh, many problems that are related to e-commerce, digital signature and cybercrime. But we need much reformation in this act. Thank you. This is all for today's session.